Holy Spirit, you're always speaking by your wonderful living voice. You have been all these days, and you are tonight, and through this evening, and through tomorrow. So we're able to hear your voice, and through you, hear and see, and come in living union with Jesus. So we thank you. Amen. I'd like just to say, I suppose with my own missionary background and therefore some worldwide outreach, um, how moved I was by hearing of, from Tom and Virginia Price <coughs> yesterday afternoon and today and of the extensions of this foundation farthest out. I find I can usually sense when God is on the move, and I sense that. I have a strong sense that he is moving in a new way through this foundation farthest out, which is taking CFO, CFO fellowship and witness round the world. As I know the world, I believe it's right for something like this. And I have a conviction that this beginnings of the foundation fathers out is going to be as big as the beginnings of the whole movement. You find that uh, maybe in some ways the foundation fathers out will overwhelm the CFO just in this country. So I, I hope we can begin to catch the thrill that God's beginning to call us out now to uh, build, to reproduce the same kind of living fellowships in India and Africa and Indonesia and Jamaica and all around the world that we have here. Um, so uh, I, I hope the day will come, maybe it is, I don't know, when the whole fellowship of Camp Fathers catch on to this and find it part of the Camp Fathers out commission from God. And uh, um, I suppose I shouldn't say this, but I, I, I'd like to see the day when uh, every, every camp when they met had, had some time when it was presented to them this uh, the calling of God to expand ourselves to the world because as Tom knows and I know the world is right for this kind of thing I also have a strong conviction that God seals on those two God seals men and women I believe those two are sealed in this kind of ministry as God set him apart to be, to be a large part with Dale Anderson, whom I know too is the precious man of God, in uh, planting this witness worldwide. So I thank God that he was brought to us these days. Now we've been talking these days of um, uh, God's plan from eternity. Uh, to uh, uh, manifest his lover father self and whatever purposes he has for eternity through his sons that his son and through his son the sons uh, are a vast company of people by whom uh, he manifests himself so, so that the God manifests us it's through the sons the father son and spirit will be seen in his love action and love purposes and, and the love fulfillments And we've been seeing how uh, he um, has brought us as persons uh, as we come to the place where we can be uh, reliable sons uh, through uh, um, uh, phases of recognition uh, of uh, our relationship to him. The first phase was the, the, the redemption phase, the, the, the justification phase. When we lost sinners, we found that our Lord Jesus Christ was reconciled to God through faith in his blood. We're producing us in, in us the consciousness of, of justification. That's we, what we saw on the, uh, using those terms that the one John used as a little child. First phase of recognition. And live this, come into his living, saved, redeemed, love relationship with Jesus, Father and Spirit. Then we saw we moved on. What it, to what is uh, the, the meaning of being a real person uh, to the consciousness of a unified relationship 
that the actual meaning of uh, the living person, Father, Son, Spirit, and ourselves, is that we, we, we have become a conscious unity. So it, it, we functioning, we do function, as humans, it isn't really we function. We functioning is Christ functioning by us, we're really Christ in human form. And that this is what, he, that this is what his, his purpose of redemption brought us into. Uh, and again, uh, it's always by the inner consciousness, because all we ever are is our inner consciousness. We are what we know we are. So we spent some time uh, seeing how God has um, uh, brought us into this in Christ, <laughs> and uh, uh, how uh, we, by uh, faith, uh, move into the, into the consciousness recognition of it. We now move on for a few minutes tonight uh, to the final of the three, where it says that we're to have a, um, a relationship with him, which is like a little, ch little child, uh, young man, uh, and father. Right unto little children, right unto young men, right unto your fathers. And we saw that uh, the first two relationships are for, for, for our development, little children and young men. The third is for uh, uh, what, can, what, what, what is, which is reproduced out from us in the fatherhood. As, a, as in fatherhood we move out into responsibilities for the, for, for the family and our place in the world and in, the, in, all, in all, the, all normal activities, all activities out from us. So the first two are into us, the third is out from us. The uh, statement made in the John state, uh, word about it here says, doesn't seem at first to mean much. It says this, I write unto you fathers, because you have known him it is from the beginning. Twice over it says, I write unto you fathers, because you have known him it is from the beginning. Now remember, knowledge is being mixed with something. Knowledge is knowing it, being it. It's part of me. It isn't something I just know here. It's something that's become, become part of me. So I write unto you fathers, because you become part of him it is from the beginning. He's not even given a name there. He's just the eternal one. Not him at the beginning, him from the beginning. And so we see, we see here that the, the, the third relationship uh, is, is uh, union with him in his, in his outgoing purposes, in his, in his perfecting purposes, him from the beginning on to the, the, the ending of it. Um, and uh, we are uh, uh, in union with him, participators of him on that relationship. That's a very strong, a strong presentation. Because you see, this person, this living person, uh, we've seen all along, only has one nature, he's for others, he's love, he is for others. His whole existence, his love, his thrill, his joy, fulfillment, is that he's the means of which other, uh, his universe is perfected, by people perfected, is out for himself, giving himself for others. This is his, the only nature he has, this is where his joy, his peace, his fulfillment is. So this is what what um, this world is saying to us. The recognition that if I'm a justified person through Christ, if I'm a unified person in Christ, so it's not I living, it's he living. Now I'm also a cooperating person. Uh, and, there's, and there's no other means in my life uh, 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 except for others. That's a strong statement. There's no, there's no partial meaning. The only meaning to life, if you and I are, are justified, unified, people in this living relationship to, to him, uh, there's no other purpose of time and eternity, no mere other means for love except for others. Uh, that's a strong statement. It means uh, that uh, whatever happens to us, See, we, we so easily slip back into the old concept, and old, old outlook. Well, why does this happen to me? Why am I in this situation? Why am I in this health condition? And I'm relating to myself. Now, as this, settled, as this new consciousness settles into me, this new recognition settles into me, every single thing happens to me because God has some purpose by me for others. Some, some means of which he, he's manifesting himself to others by me in this situation. No situation ever happens to me again for myself. It's always part of the purpose of others. That's why I keep saying it's a strong thing. A strong thing to recognize it. Now in each case we learn uh, uh, what we recognize, faith, faith is recognizing facts. 
when we were saved we recognized the fact Jesus took my place and then the consciousness came into us uh, when we recognize this unified relationship we recognize it isn't I it's this living Christ that ever is the person the real person living here I recognize it by faith the witness came into me settled me in this fact so see in each case it's a recognition of a fact so I'm just uh, in this final statement throwing it out to you for those who have ears to hear can I begin to reckon, recognize there's never any other meaning to my life Everything that's happened to me is always because God has some outgoing purpose by me in, uh, 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 in his uh, uh, um, uh, saving, uh, uh, self-manifesting purposes in the world, nothing else. If I begin to recognize it, it'll begin to settle into me. As I say, you think on the health condition. Often, you know, seeking health is selfish. It's why aren't I better? No, no, no. Uh, stop by saying, what's God got in this? Don't stop by saying, may I be better? Stop by saying, what's, what have you got in this? I, my, my, my body is part of you. What's your after? What you, in what way are you revealing yourself through me in this situation? It's at uh, every situation. Stop by saying, this is, I'm, I'm a cooperator with God. My amazing privilege is to be the means of which God manifests himself. I, we are the God manifests us in this world. This is our high privilege. Uh, cooperators with him. So, and uh, begin to learn that, to have that outlook on life. Uh, you see, we've, we've moved over. Uh, it, it, it used to be a question of our dependence on him. Now it's our cooperation with him. We used to know him. He's my living bread. He's my living water. That's a permanent fact now. You don't have to find him again. He's forever my living bread in here. He's forever my living water. You don't have to find him again or I have to recognize him. We talked about the difference between soul and spirit on that level, I think, yesterday. So we, that's, our, that's our permanent background. Uh, but our foreground is we're, we're co-bred with him for others. We are co, we are co, uh, outpoured wine for him, for, uh, with him for others. We are co with God for others. It's a different relationship. It's a relationship of fellowship, cooperation, co acting, not, oh God, I'm hanging on to you. No, 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 that's fixed. He's hung on to me. He got me, praise God. That's finished. Uh, there's a hanging on there. He's got me. I'm part of him. He's part of me. We are he in human form forever. That's, part, that's fixed. So don't look at that. Take up the right now. As he, we are as he with him. Now, what's like, what, what, what's, uh, his purpose is uh, in manifesting himself some way by me to others? <laughs> so this I'm just presenting to you. This is the fatherhood level. Uh, it's it's actually uh, the the level which uh, uh, which we we because all these begin the beginning. Even when we're born again, we begin to do that. You know, uh, the moment we're his, our delight is we're going to be blessing to others, isn't it? We know it already. Our true joy is when we can be something for others, isn't it? When our lives can tell for others, that's our joy. That's eternal joy. Is there any joy there is? That's eternal thrill, joy, fun, gaiety, wonder. When we, in some way, are bread, when other people can eat and find Jesus. And uh, uh, outpour uh, uh, living water, as it were, by which other people can, can drink and find Jesus. That doesn't mean it doesn't mean we don't get back it doesn't mean we try to be for others cut that trying out it's this person acts by us we don't do it he acts by us it's he takes us his way so we don't try don't try just be yourself this wonderful life you're just yourself as if you're just for yourself it's a paradoxical life you're just yourself you're not you you're Jesus now, we, we, we talk, talked about yesterday forget that and be yourself this is Jesus I'll bring to you live your life live it freely but uh, the person in you is the person for others the Holy Spirit in you is personal for others. He'll cause you to be for others. You can't help it. He'll cause you to relate your life so that you can be some means of which other people can, can find they're also sons of God by grace in Jesus Christ and so on. So I only, I only throw that out as a third recognition. See, faith is recognizing fact. And so we begin to settle into this high recognition. This is what's called the ascended recognition. See, there are the three phases. Crucifixion, resurrection, ascension. Crucifixion cut the old, cut me out from the the, the old uh, dominion of Satan. Resurrection introduced me to a new new reunion relationship with the Lord Himself, Christ Himself. Ascension, His uh, seated, seated means you finished it. Jesus Christ had finished the death and resurrection. That's out. It's out for us too. That's a background. Now, having uh, finished the, the, the having finished the past, now you're occupied in the next step. The next step, going out to to, to bring in the multitudes, the harvest. And we're the means of which he goes out. So we're seated with him to go out to go out with him to bring in the harvest. 
on the victory, victory level very far above Satan and all the rest of it. That's the ascended life we're in now. We've left behind the cosmic direction. We're living in the ascension, which is the outgoing life uh, by which, by us, he can, he, can, he can reap in his harvest. I say again, don't try and interpret that. Hold speed and temper Don't try to say, ought I be this? Cut that ought out, there's no ought in it. But if you, if you recognize and accept by faith, this, this is the meaning, except now, Lord, it's up to you to put this through me now. Now, Lord, you're in me like this. Uh, it's, it's you who, uh, who, who, in your own way, uh, uh, man, move through me, uh, manifest yourself through me to others in whatever way that may be. And I accept that by faith. I remember, um, if there's a young man, precious scripture, might be for a young person here. I remember how a young man, I got those two scriptures in, in John. One is, oh, uh, he shall be in you a well of water, Jesus Christ, a well of water springing up in everlasting life, like an artesian well. That's Christ in you. A well of water springing up. There it says, he who believes on me, John 7:38, out of him, out from him, uh, out from his inmost path, travel, shall flow rivers, rivers of living water in you <laughs> spring up to the everlasting life out from you as rivers of living water I remember when I saw that in my early ministry maybe 20 21 years of age mm, I thought rivers maybe one day a muddy trickle so the whole thing like this <laughs> muddy trickles they cleaned up some and the rivers so they do could might that be one person catches off of that Mother, one person says, okay, God says, I don't do anything. If I believe him, he said, out of my inmost part will flow rivers to the world. Okay, God, I take it. I sign this up. If you take that, I took it, and made it my own. Well, I don't know, muddy trickles, I don't know. The streams do flow, streams do flow, that's all about it. River, rivers is a big word, and these streams flow. And, and they don't dry up either. So see, this is the, the, that's all I would need to say, want to say about this, what is the meaning of the father, fatherhood level. But the Holy Spirit in you is the one who fulfills it in your life. Uh, and relates you to this or that by which he, 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 he manifests himself by us. Now I just want to ask for a moment or two, um, by what ways does God manifest himself by us? By what ways are we God manifestors? We're in the foreground, persons in action. This is persons in action. But the persons in action really are Christ manifesting by us. By what way are we, are we people in action? So that really it is the living God expressing himself through us and moving out into whatever his, his, his purpose of grace and, and, and power may be through us. By two ways, inner, inner and outer. Because we're inner people and we're outer people. Or, if you like, we're spirit and we're body, or soul and body together. A spirit inner, soul and body outer. Two ways by which he manifests himself by us. Now, uh, uh, remember, uh, we are inner people. Every outer thing comes from, from an inner relationship. The supreme uh, uh, importance is the inner relationship, the inner activity. What the inner activity is, it, it comes out in the other form. So first of all, the inner one is, is the one that, that matters. Now the simple term used in the Bible, of course, is by faith. By faith, we know that. But it's given a place of supreme importance in the Bible. There are only two words in the Bible which, Bible which have chapters themselves. One is faith, Hebrews 11. The other is love, 1 Corinthians 13. And faith works by love. It works by the inner motivation, the self, the self-giving motivation. But the faith always worked by love. We used to have a self-loving motivation, and we worked faith for our own ends. That's the old, old unsaved life. In the new life, we have uh, the, the other love motivating us, and that, that, that by our faith. Faith works by love, but faith. So faith is a central place. Jesus always gave it to it. Jesus puts stark emphasis on faith. For instance, when the woman came to him with the issue of blood, she touched him, and he knew virtue came out of his, out of him. When he turned, he didn't point his virtue. He said, Daughter, thy faith has saved thee. What interested him was somebody who moved in by faith, and the faith liberated the, the virtue to come through. And he was, uh, he was centering around the, the human element of the faith, which, which, which made it possible for the virtue to come through. So faith. Now, uh, there's an there's a attitude of faith and an action of faith. I want to say on this a moment, attitude of faith. 
how you see things. All faith is how you begin to see things and then you attach yourself to it. All faith is you see something, you believe something, you want something, you take it, you go to it. So it starts by what you're seeing, you're believing in, or, uh, uh, what's, what's attracting your attention, and then faith is, I'll take that, I'll go there, I'll do so. Your, your action of faith, your attitude of faith, action of faith, follows your attitude of faith. I've got a tremendous revolution on this one. I don't know if you have. You see, we humans are geared to one attitude. That's the negative. We're in a negative world and we're always seeing things negatively. Uh, life's full of it. We see our problems, we see our difficulties, we see the large and small things, we see everything in terms of difficulty. Difficulty in people, difficulty in things, difficult situations. The whole of life pours in on, on those negative situations. Dark, evil, bad, negative, uh, 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 disturbing situations. So we live in the negative. Now, when you see a negative, you, you're, you're beaten by it. What can you do with it? Well, that's the trouble. Life is a trouble. What can I do with my problem? What can I do with that difficult situation in people's lives or these family situations? What can I do with finance problems? What can I do with people who have hurt me? What can I do with larger things in the, in the world which are hurtful today and evil and so on? What can I do with them? Well, what can we do? <laughs> there's there's uh, the devil stronger than human self. We can't touch it. What can we do with it? It was a tremendous revelation to me. Have you had it? But I got a, a reverse in how I'm to see things. A total reverse. And that total reverse was when I, I, it dawned on me that I must see things wholly differently. Why? For one thing, I, I, I had a stretch in my understanding of God. See, I understood God personally to me. His love, I understood Jesus Christ personally to me. God personal, Christ personal, Holy Spirit personal. God universal. I had a vague idea. It dawned on me, he, God's in everything everywhere. Of course he is. We've been talking about it all the time. Everything is expression here. The whole universe is expression this one. This person is everything. Good and evil. Oh. So everything, whatever situation it is, uh, their situation, God's in it. I went further. I proved you a moment. I found that God means a thing to be what it is. God means evil to be evil. It is in it. That's difficult, isn't it? God means evil to be evil. He means evil things to be evil, and evil people to do evil things, and evil consequences to follow. He means it. I've cut the word permission, permissive will, a long time out of my life. Means it. What do I mean? Well, I saw, I saw it like this. Uh, the only way God can have living persons, living sons, they must be free people, of course. Like himself, free people. So we, he has to start, start, he does start by making persons who are free. Now freedom is a necessity of choice, you know that. Freedom is I have to choose all the time. All life, I'm free to choose, and what I choose take me over. You're free to choose when you've come here this week. You came, it took you over. Life is, that's what faith is, you're free to choose, but your choices, you choose it, it takes you over. So that, that's what freedom is. So if we're to be people, we have to be free. And so we're free to make our choices. And of course our basic choice, we talked about in other, in other, in, in other talks, is uh, am I with Christ as a self-giving person, with uh, Christ expressing his self-giving love through me, or I, am I with myself or really with Satan in being a self-loving person? Is my choice with Satan to be a self-seeking, self-satisfying, self-gratifying, self-centered person? Or is my choice with Christ, in, by his spirit, by himself, by being a self-giving, utter lover? Well, you know what happened, of course. The whole human family went this way down. Now, God's not responsible for the consequences. He's responsible for the freedom. He's not responsible for the consequences. So God's not responsible for any evil thing. Evil things all come out of our misuse of freedom. Now, we're all involved in this world, in this world so we get his corruptions, we get his diseases. His, uh, some things we are responsible for, huge and directly. Mostly things just happen, accidents, hurts, tragedies in the world. We aren't directly, but, but we're mingled in the whole human family in this, in this chaotic condition. This corrupting, uh, d uh, disastrous, uh, uh, hurt, uh, hurting, evil condition of this world. We're in it. Now, God's not responsible for that. God's responsible for the freedom which we use and produce this. But, because he's God and perfect love, because he's everywhere, he's also in the situation, everything is he. So he's in the evil situation. But because he's love, he's in the evil situation to bring good out of it. Oh, that's it. He's in every evil situation, he's not responsible for it, it came into being through the products of the, this, 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 this freedom of fall, which produced those things, but he's everywhere. He's writing those things therefore. Therefore, the very evil thing, he's, he's there, he, it's he in a sense, 
Uh, but he, because he's love, because he's perfect purpose, he's there to turn that thing into a redemptive end. Now, do you see what that means? Do you see, I can have a reverse way of seeing things, and I find this the key to a liberated life. I can either say, the oh, what on earth should I do with this? Seeing humanly. Or I can see with God's sight, with me, it, it looks like that, but I'm not seeing it like that. I'm seeing a, the perfect God with a perfect purpose, who meant it, a perfect action, perfect love, and a perfect outcome to this thing in that situation. Thank you, Lord. You meant that thing to be, you aren't responsible for it. You're meant to freedom to have its effects, and men have freedom to have its effects. You're not responsible. But because you're everywhere, because you're perfect love and you're aware, you're in the heart of that business, and you're going to turn it into a, 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 a new blessing, a, a new revelation of yourself. Now that transforms your, your inner seeing. You are governed by your inner seeing. Do you understand that? With inner consciousness, you live and are controlled by the way you see things, not by things as they are outside, how you see them. It's tremendous. As you see a thing, ooh, 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 ooh. Now you always talk like that. We're human. I, all our life, oh dear, what about that? We're meant to be human. So I'm start bewildered, hurt. But when I know the secret, wait a minute, I'm doing it all the time. Wait a minute, God, it doesn't look like it. It looks like the devil. It is the devil. But God, you, were, you, you gave that freedom. Out of freedom has been this operation, if you like, of the devil here. But you're everywhere, you're there, and you're in the middle of that thing. And I see you meant to be, and I see you're going to turn this into a new revelation of your grace and love and power and presence. Oh, I say, all right, okay, God, okay, praise the Lord. And from, from depression and, 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 the, and the sense of binding the feet, so I'm liberated. God's in that thing. And you'll see God's going to come out of it. Transfer your whole outlook. So do you see this terrific thing? If this is true, there are no problems left in life unless you see the problem. There are no difficulties left in life unless you see the difficulties. There are no diseases left in life that you see with these. Don't look at diseases, see living Christ in you. Let God handle, handle diseases. Don't try and get the diseases healed, get busy seeing Jesus. Much better, much better. Don't, don't, uh, you get it, don't see evil. Now that's tough, don't see evil. The Bible says God doesn't. He's a pure eyes and behold evil. Read it, back up says that. There are the pure eyes and behold evil. And then it says to us, this is a pure in heart, but then see God, and that's what you see. The pure only sees God. Now, I'm not to see evil, but of course that's evil. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. It looks like it. And it is, it is so on the other but I'm not, uh, it's how I see it matters to me. It, it is actual fact, it's an evil thing like that. But what that to me is how I see it. And my, 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 my contribution to me, it would be not, would be quite how I see it. <laughs> now, you see? So, is it evil? No, I'm not seeing it evil. No, I'm not seeing it. It is evil, it can be called evil, it looks evil, but I see everything as what God meant out of freedom. He didn't produce that, but he meant it to be the effect, but because he's perfect love, perfect purpose, perfect will, out of that thing is going to come up with thing. Now, I shout short. If I ask hands raised in this room for a number of people who had tragedies in their lives, have they been blessed? I look up all over the place. All over the place we found that it is turned out a new blessing, a new, a new cause, a new, new, a new, precisely, precisely. To see that you saw, oh, turned out to be a new relationship for you to God, to the people and so on. Plus. But I say again, do you see the tremendousness of that? Do you see that everything in the Bible is total, it's never partial? Do you see the totality of that? There isn't one problem left. There isn't one difficulty left. There's not one tragedy left. I'm hurt as a human. That's, that's it, that's a human part of me. If I can see through, oh no, that it, it, it is like that, and that came out of misuse of freedom and so on, but my perfect God meant it to be, my perfect God meant freedom to have its effect, my perfect God is fitted in that thing, and he's going to come through with a new presence of his power or blessing of salvation for himself. Oh, it's revolutionary, this thing. But that's where, that's where we become on top people. If I just... Uh, uh, I think I should do, you know it. If I give one or two biblically proofs, what could be greater? What could be greater than Jesus at Calvary? It's fantastic. Who did Jesus see at Calvary? Who crucified him? Well, we know Satan did. We're told at the Last Supper, Satan entered into Judas. And Jesus knew Satan had entered into Judas, and he said quietly, Judas, he loved Judas, tried to win him. All right, go out, Judas, quietly, and do what you're going to do. He knew what he was going to do, betray him. And Satan was on the march now. I got in through the Caiaphas and Pilate and the Pharisees and the soldiers and the, the Pilate wasn't so much to blame as other people were to blame, Judas and so on. 
God, Satan, <laughs> wide open. Do you get what Jesus said twice over? Do you get it? The last verse, but one, in John 14, is the supper table, one little supper table conversation, on supper table. The last verse, but one, said this, to his, his beloved disciples, hereafter, I won't, I won't be much with you, I, I won't speak much with you, for the prince of this world comes and hath nothing in me. In me is in the consciousness. Out to anything, tear him to pieces. Her skirt, he puts out, in him not at all. You're not another person. You're an inner person. See, this is the great secret when you learn it. There are no prisons except your own self. A prison is not a prison unless you take it to prison. There's nothing binds a person. A communist isn't a bound communist when he's got Jesus. He's rejoicing and Jesus is in him and Jesus is giving you a chance of some light where he is. There are no bindings and no prisons on earth uh, except the way you take it. That's your only prison. When you take a thing as evil and uh, caught, that you're caught up by, then there's evil and you fight it. When you say, God put me there, it's love, it's perfect, God's going to be you're free. That's the strange reason why Paul said to a slave, said to a slave, remain slaves. Well, this isn't very good social gospel today. In one he said, he said, if you're a slave, remain a slave. Why? Because if you're a slave, you're outwardly bound to your master. But if you're Christ's slave, you're Christ's free man. You're free to love, that's freedom. To have Christ in you and to be able to express the love of Christ, that's freedom. And you slave as a free person, and your boss will caught, caught up with his flesh stuff. He's a slave, a slave with his flesh. Do you know what I mean? And so do you see with Jesus as the first thing. Uh, look at that. Right at confronted with Satan. There's nothing in me. Can't see him. Don't see him. Can't see him. There's nothing in me. Ultimately, oh. How do I know he can't see him? Because three, three chapters afterwards, Jesus went through Gethsemane. Kind of settled the thing up there. You know that dramatic moment? And that's a wonderful word. You know it, of course, as well as I do. Came out of Gethsemane. There were the soldiers, the torches and the shouts and the noises come to arrest him. And there was our beloved Peter having one good shot, one, one last flesh, flesh shot for Jesus. He got his sword out, wow. He got a little nervous, so he cut the ear off, and he meant to cut the head off. The, the, the shaky, this one. Um, and shut it off. But do you see the beauty of this? Do you catch the beauty of it? Think, for, for, for instance, of the poise. If your body is arrested, you're pretty nervous, because evil arrests are evil. When you see evil, you're pretty nervous. If Jesus had been seeing the soldiers, he'd be nervous, pretty tense, wouldn't he? Didn't see him. He's so free, he could pick up the ear and put it back. That's some miracle. Right? <laughs> Confronted by the, the soldiers. Then he said, listen, tremendous. Peter said, drop that. Don't use, don't use those swords anymore. Listen, Peter. The cup which my father has given me, shall I drink it? He called the devil the father's cup. That's going pretty far. The devil crucified. It's his father's cup. The devil with his father's cup, in, into that cup, would, out of that cup, would be poured life for the world. So he called the wicked devil his father's cup, which the father gave him. That's going pretty far. So do you see how far we can go and say, that's the Lord, that's the Lord. It looks like the devil, it's the Lord, you watch. We can see the Lord coming through that for anything which looks to me like a mess and the devil and everything else. We begin to get something where we begin to see our, our, our lost dear ones like that. So seeing a lostness. It's all right. God means them to go, them to go that way to, to teach him some sense. God means us to go down to prepare us to go up. Leave them alone. Say, okay, let them go that way. He, he, the Father's got him. That's my faith. Well, you watch the Father's got him. They get through this thing, they're going to come back again. Then you can you have a actual freedom and love and faith towards the, the ones that, who outwardly all tear you up. Of course, the other, the other famous, uh, famous illustration was Joseph. Joseph. I repeat, I should know it, because of the word used, where God has said, purpose to make Joseph his deliverer to children of Israel in Egypt. You know the story, of course. And he, he, he put Joseph through all that selling of a slave by his own, by his own brothers. And then under Potiphar as, as a prisoner, and the, and the lie, Potiphar's wife lying him back in the prison again. Back in 14 years, it said the iron in his soul, not only the iron on his bands. It all the time that precious Joseph knew, knew God. As, as peace, and, 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 I, I'm going to now, you could see it. Then he came up to be Prime Minister. And you know, the, the children of Israel returned. Uh, and the uh, moment of reconciliation came. But that famous word, it's in the last chapter of Genesis. Uh, he said to his, his brothers, who were still a bit frightened because of what they'd done, you meant it for evil, God meant it for good. Write that under every tough spot you've got. God means that for good. Every tough spot. Right, God means it. 
doesn't permit it. God wasn't responsible. The tough spot came out of that evil doers, but God meant to use those evil doers for good. And so the devil does the evil good doing and all oh, fallen man, okay, okay. God doesn't say it. He says, That's all right. That's an that's that's amazing thing I mean out of that to become a new good. Isn't that beautiful? If I wanted one third final proof, it's the, the actual boldness of the statement of Peter of the first speech after Pentecost, after the crucifixion. You read there, he spoke to the crowds around there, he said, uh, Your people, through determined counsel, determined, determined counsel in the full knowledge of God, by which he has the crucified say, God determined you. God determined you to do it. God determined the wicked hands are crucified. So, uh, uh, this is the first way in which the, uh, the uh, spirit, the light manifests through us. Because when in all sorts of situations you have poise, and you have peace, and you have praise, light shining. A light which the world hasn't got, because of course the world's always getting torn up by things, you can't see things as we do. Now I want to say one more thing, I haven't, I've had to tie up a bit tonight, but um, I may maybe finish it tomorrow morning. One other thing, at least begin it. That's uh, uh, we in faith attitude, that's victory. Faith attitude, I've died, you might say, to the attitude of all that seeing it negatively, seeing it as he sees it. I've risen to see as God sees it with God and this release and praise and so on. Faith action, what's faith action? Faith attitude, faith action. You see, uh, the whole point of being sons is we function as sons. We are, we are equipped with all God. God dwells in us. You know that? We are equipped with all of God. Do you get that? We are actually forms of God. God's resources, God's presence, God's power is we. Is we. We are equipped people. We haven't got to get him. He's got us. You get all that they please God do. I never waste time asking God to do things. I just say thank you. I've already done it. I've, I've got you. I never ask God to come and bless the meeting. I say, you're here, you're the blessing, you're, you're going with it. I don't waste my time asking what I've got. That's, uh, that's the, if a person offers me a plate of cookies and I keep asking for them, I insult them, don't I? I must take it. So, long ago, I don't I give up a lot of that, that negative praying, asking God for things. Because I, I, you and I function as God. We function, God it put himself in his influence up into us. With his resources. And we function as God. We use the resources of God. This is this marvelous new life, this new ascended life we live in. This father life, tremendous life. So we don't bother with the devil anymore. It's far, the Bible says that he's far, we're far above the devil. Well, why don't we make a big, a big mess of the devil? We get up in the airplane, an automobile looks like a peanut, that's about the only size the devil is, that's all. So you don't bother with him, don't bother with him, bother with the person who conquers him. But uh, this one where I have a few moments here on it, um, how do we function as sons? Now, faith action. What is all, I told you, what is all action in life? It's inwardly saying I'll do something. The word of faith, you don't call it that. Every single thing you ever did in life. Inside, I'll eat that. I'll sit there. I'll go there. Inside you, you said a decided word. Thought doesn't do it. You may, there may be several chairs you can choose out of. Several things you may eat. Several places you may go to. Thought is like a father level. It's general. Faith is a subtle level which comes with a decisive mode, that's what I'll eat, that's what I'll go, that's what I'll take, that's what I'll make, like those things we just said made now. Uh, they said, we'll make those. Uh, I think John didn't say, I want to, I want to be an artist, yeah, I'll, I'll go and make it. That's faith. So faith is my inability to uh, um, uh, relate myself, you see, to something that's available, like food or going to a place or doing something, and then I say, I'll go there. The faith is the moment of decision, I'll go there, I'll take that, I'll do that. Now, humanly, on a human level, I do it with my hands, or with my feet, or with my tools, and I, I, I produce the thing, or with my car, I go to a place. So I fulfill my word of faith, humanly, by my actions. Now we're talking about people's spirits, we're talking about the spirits. Now the spirits are no acts. Now, can I just catch this? The whole meaning now of being in places of problems, the things we talked about. Oh, well, our privilege is to be the problem, problem life, uh, 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 with its uh, distortions and, and, the, and distractions and challenges and disturbances. Life's always going to be, it's our privilege to be in disturbed situations. You always get them. <laughs> life is that. Now, I told you the first attitude, wait a minute, God meant it, get there first. 
okay God you meant it you're there so you've got a peace at first a release at not fighting it and all that you accept it you stop I said okay God this you meant it to be it you're going to handle it now that's the first faith attitude now the faith action is if you don't like it you're there to be the agent by which God will change it you ought to be the, the, the agent by which God changes what I mean I mean you accept something you don't like well you still don't like it you say okay God I've accepted that, that, that thing wrong in that life or that lack of finance or, or that, pro- that problem of business or problem in church which I accept it you meant it to be it's, it hurts me I don't like it I accept it for you you've got a purpose you've got your first step your attitude but you don't like it God doesn't mean to like it because God means you to be a person disturbed by situations that you may be the one who goes further and say God you're, uh, uh, what, what, what I see as a need is with you a supply it's already a supply see there's that marvellous scripture that would, uh, in Isaiah where uh, Jehovah God says before they call I will answer well that's silly try it on the telephone before they call I will answer <laughs> well very well you've got to call first to get an answer uh, lots, of things, lots, lots of things God does are silly or willy whichever way you like uh, before they, why before they call answer? Because before they call our answer means God has the answer before you call. Precisely, God's always got the answer there. It's, it, he's got, it, it's so he's an eternal there. Now, to get the answer through us, he calls us to call. That's the need. He puts us in a place I don't like, something I don't like. I like to see that supplied, that health or that financial or that change in a person's life or something. Whatever you like, I don't like it. Now, God made me to do that. Uh, so I can be the agent who has turned up the call in other words turned up to, to, to face something I don't like now the whole thing God is saying to us you desire you can take now this is the Lord, Lord uh, 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 all he gives us is, 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 all he has is our disposal what you desire you take so you get that famous scripture whatsoever ye desire when you pray believe you will see them believe you have them no limits on desire now don't say you see, we've got so used to suspicious, uh, being suspicious of ourselves. My desires might be wrong. Drop that. Count your desires are right. Your God's got you. Can't you be bold. Count your motives are right, not wrong. Go for what you desire. Be bold. All he says is what you desire. All right, then. If you desire, see what you say. Now, desire means there's something that you'd like to have which isn't there. But you say, wait a minute, if it is in God, God calls you to have desire because the things are already there with God. It's there already. Before they call, our answer is there. Now then, this is, this is how a son acts. A son uses the word of faith on that level. Same as you do on earth. On earth, you desire food. Well, you can see it. I'll take it. And you take it. Now, in the spiritual realm, you desire something, whatever it may be, material things, financial things, needs, jobs, uh, health, salvation, whatever, whatever it may be, uh, thing, you desire it. Now this time it's in the spirit. You can't take it. The spirit is the person who believes it, not you. So uh, I, we then say, you're doing it. Thank you, you've done that. That's there. That finance is there. That healing is there. That uh, salvation is there. That salvation that from it's, 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 it's done. That's the word of faith. The word of faith sees the thing as done in, in God, because it's all about spirit. Now, in this case, it's the spirit that brings it about. We can't go with our hands and get it. This time, the spirit is the hands or the car or the thing which brings the thing into being. The spirit brings it, brings it into being. Now, that's the use of the word of faith. I, won't, I mustn't stop. I was stopping a moment. But, um, uh, I think in the main two things hinder us there one is we're afraid of our desires we aren't bold enough we, we can't quite believe it can be so we're afraid of our desires well more for you then that's all more for you God says what you desire the other, the other is uh, your emotional reaction oh it couldn't be ridiculous say God's done that thing that, that, that lost thing is found that uh, uh, need is, is I don't see the need I see the supply that problem I see the solutions there uh, that uh, bound, bound situation I see the release you know, one nonsense not, your, whole, your, your whole reasons your emotion is one nonsense talking like that so you, you, spirit has to operate against reason and against, against uh, uh, emotion and against your emotions against reason you have to speak the word the word is spoken the word the word of faith is done I say it's done 
Now the, um, the, the key moment is the, is the word of faith. A word is decisive. You don't come here because shall I come, shall I not come. You come because I'll come. That, makes, that puts a person into action. The word puts a person into action. And the word puts the Holy Spirit into action. And so when we as humans use the word of faith, it, the Holy Spirit is, 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 move, then is, is moving through and doing the thing uh, to bring it to pass. So the, the word is the, is the vital moment, I've said it's done, it's finished, I don't repeat it. Supposing it hasn't come, come. well then obviously you haven't believed it, you wouldn't ask that. You say, supposing it doesn't come, in other words you never believe it, or you wouldn't say that. Because you said it's come, it's not for you to get to come, that's God's business, put him on the spot and keep him on the spot. Then in that sense, get it there, that's all, go on saying it, don't go in. If you said the word of faith, that's put God in action, not you. He's given himself to you, available for that purpose. He's put God in the action. Leave him in action, you know. It's done. Stick by that. You die for it. Stick by that. Now that's a, that's a son. Um, sons of God in spirit action. In spirit action because your attitude is, is this top part all the time, praising, accepting, believing in, in the ridiculous circumstances. And then you help other people do. Make a difference between sympathy and compassion. Sympathy lies you down with people where they are. It doesn't help them. Maybe you have to do a little bit. Uh, you'll just help the old poor things where they're poor things. It doesn't help them. It helps you a little to feel nice that you've been like that. That's all. Compassion is uh, sympathy. Uh, uh, helps you to take the attitude you like to take over a person. Compassion is what the attitude you need to take for them. Compassion they need to quicken to believe God. And so uh, to operate that in people, uh, instead of being all torn up, saying, no, it's okay, God means this, you watch, you praise God, you see what happens. That shouldn't be to help other people like that. So this is faith attitude and faith action. So how do you do it? But uh, I can't stop now, but I mean, our whole life's been spent that way. My whole life been lived, lived, lived on words of faith. I had a little tiny mission with a handful. We've become a great world mission now with thousands all around the place. And every step has been, God, that's it. Thanks this year, give us 10, next year, give us 15, next year, give us 75, next year, give us 50. We've just been taking, taking, taking from God all the time. And the thing comes into existence. So we don't have to bother with humor, they're a nuisance. I can't get any other, can't get anything out of humor, they're too mean. I prefer to get it out of God, much better. It's all, it's an easy life. That's the secret. So that's just um, the, the spirit phase of this um, cooperating life with the Father of life with God. A little bit tomorrow for the last moment we speak about the body phase when we get to action as bodies. That's as dear as we can do for tonight. Thank you.